Hey everyone, Alex here and welcome to episode 3 of my Dota 2 Beginner's Guide series, this one on items. Now, I'm not going to talk about each and every single item in the game because I would make a video basically two hours long. However, what I'm going to do is in this video, I'm going to focus on certain mechanics that you need to understand about items, the idea of upgrading and how slot efficiency works. And I'm also going to talk about specific items that seem to be evergreen throughout the meta. Uh, items that all carries tend to use, uh, items that all supports tend to use, and uh, all mids tend to use, so that you can have an understanding of what you should be using and building towards as you kind of get started on your Dota 2 journey. There's a lot of items here, most of which are very niche, and you're often not really going to use as you get started, right? But there are others that seem to have universal uh, use and appeal, which I think are very important for you to understand. So uh, we will be talking about those in this video, so uh, stay tuned. But what we're going to talk about first is the idea of having basic and upgraded items so a basic item is something like a slippers of agility you have the slippers of agility it's a single slot item it gives you three agility and that's what you get now the idea of an upgraded item is you take that slippers of agility which is kind of the base item here and you, you can combine the slippers of agility with a circlet and a recipe the wraith band and you get well the wraith band and the advantage to doing this is that Look what, look what you have here you have these circlet and these slippers of agility and a uh, well an inherent cost in gold this is three slots. You only have six on your hero at any given time. You combine that into one single slot, and you get this benefit. Yes, you get additional stats, right? So you're, uh, you're combining basically the slippers of agility and the circlet. That's why you get the five agility, two strength, and two intelligence. But you're also getting bonus attack speed and bonus armor. And that's purely bonus, and that comes from the gold you, gold you spent there. And that's kind of an important principle to understand. The idea of slot efficiency. So for instance, you have an iron branch here, okay? You have an iron branch. It's 50 gold. The Iron Branch gives one to all attributes. So that's three total attributes. Okay? Three total attributes for 50 gold. However, the Slippers of Agility cost 145 gold for three agility. At first glance, a new player might say, well, the Slippers of Agility is better because it gives you three agility, whereas the other one gives you one agility. Not quite. Talk about the total stats. Here are, this is three total stats for 50 gold. One agility. One strength, one intelligence. The strength and intelligence, say you're, say you're a drow ranger and you want to focus on agility, sure. But the strength and intelligence are going to help you with mana regeneration, with your health regeneration, and with your overall health pool and mana pool. Pretty valuable in the early game where regeneration is key. And we'll talk about it in a second when we talk about tangos and clarities. But let's talk about slot efficiency first. So overall, per stat, per agility, okay, the slippers are way more expensive. So you're getting three stats for 50. Here, you're paying three times the, the cost for the uh, the slippers. The difference is that to get that agility, if you want three agility, you have to take up three slots in your inventory with three iron branches. Whereas you only take up one slot with slippers of agility. You amplify that even further when you go to something like Eagle Song. So I have the math here. So basically 50 gold for three stats on the iron branch. And then with the, uh, with the agility here, you buy slippers, it's 48 gold per agility. Okay, per agility, not for total stats. And then when you go to the Eagle Song, 3,000 gold. It's 3,000 gold, but you get 25 agility. Per agility, you are paying 120. 120 gold per agility. Whereas here, you're paying 48. And here, you're paying, you know, even less, right? Even less. You know, you get three stats for 50. The idea here is that in order to get to 20, it's impossible to get to 25 agility stacking slippers or bands. Or, you know, of course, you can do it with the, with the blades. But you need to buy three blades to get uh, almost the equivalent. But overall, you're taking up three slots in your inventory. So slot efficiency becomes extremely important as you move, as you're a carry moving into the late game. Because you're going to want to build a butterfly. And then you might need a desolator. But you can't hold on to all these separate components the entire time. You just don't have enough space in your inventory. So slot efficiency is something that you need to understand when building items. Now, let's talk about the early game. Early game items. Let's assume... Well, all positions. All position early game items, you're going to want to make sure you have something called a tango. Tangos allow you to heal. They have multiple charges, and they heal over time. And uh, if you take damage, it does not reset the uh, the heal effect, which is great. You get three charges for 90 gold. Very, uh, very gold and heal efficient. Now, you have a healing salve as well. Now, when you compare the two, the healing salve grants, uh, grants um, healing faster. That's the key thing. Uh, you only get one charge of the healing self, so you know you get, uh, you know you get roughly the amount of same healing through the three tangles as to one self. But what's important here is that if you're hit by an enemy hero or Russian, you lose the effect. So if an enemy hero, you know, from range kind of just throws an auto attack at you and pokes you, 
you lose the healing self, whereas with the tango, you don't. However, there might be circumstances if you're a carry, you prefer the healing self because you want to get right back in there ASAP. You want to back out for 10 seconds, heal all the way back up, and get back in at near full health so that you can, uh, you know, last hit and maintain your economy. Now, clarity is the same thing, except it is uh, related to mana. And the way clarity works is that uh, you regenerate mana slowly over time. If you get hit, you lose it. Okay, and the uh, the opposite effect of the uh, the salve is kind of well, not really the opposite effect, but you have an enchanted mango. The enchanted mango gives you health regeneration, but also can instantly restore 110 mana. These are useful on some heroes like Crystal Maiden, for instance, so that if you see a gank opportunity or you see an opportunity to get a kill with your with your lane partner, but you don't have enough mana, you eat a mango and you frostbite and lock that person in place while you take that, that hero down. So essentially, you're trading 70 gold for the opportunity to take advantage and get an immediate mana burst in order to cast a very critical spell, okay? Very good to know. So, another thing that we need to talk about here is boots. There are multiple types of boots. Now, boots start as a basic, uh, basic item here. So you have boots. Boots are basically a build, are built into every single hero in the game. You don't start with boots. Like, boots aren't the first thing you build on a hero. Uh, some newer players might be tempted to buy boots first, but realistically what you want to do is buy multiple tangos, maybe a clarity, and, uh, you know, if you're supporting, you know, you bring a ward or two. Uh, there's different builds. If you're mid, you're going to bring a bottle. So uh, if you're carrying, you need a quelling blade. We'll talk about those in a second here, but don't, don't get sucked into buying boots right away with, with your initial starting goal because regeneration is key in the lane. You want to stay in lane as long as you can so that you can gain as much experience and you can deny as much as you can or you can get as many last hits as you can. It's all very important to do that. But boots, boots are going to be purchased on every hero in Dota 2 regardless of the match. So it's very important you understand how these work. Now, with boots, you have boots of speed, right? Which grant movement speed, uh, you know, 5 movement speed, 45 movement speed, and that's fine for 500 gold. Now, the way boots work, though, is that you can upgrade into many different types of boots, and they're all very dependent on the situation you're in. For instance, you have boots of travel. Boots of travel are good. You know, they give you a, basically, a they upgrade your talent's portal scroll, but realistically, they're a really high-end luxury item. I can count on one hand I've, I've, the times I've even built boots of travel. There are some heroes that take advantage of it, but generally speaking, you're probably not building boots of travel as a relatively uh, new player. Instead, what you're going to probably look at is something like phase boots if you're a carry. If you're a carry, uh, phase boots are great for uh, for heroes that uh, really rely on kind of, you know, ganking or kind of moving to make that kill. The reason for that is because they get phasing movement, which means they can move through units. So units do not obstruct their movement. They get a burst of speed and uh, they do additional damage. And that's key. Like, for instance, take a, uh, take uh, Slark, for instance. What Slark can do is where's Slark here? Here's a Morana. Where's Morana, Slark? I'm Slark is going to be over here. Where is he? Why can't I see him? There he is. Here's Slark. So what he can Never do is he can apply enough. a lot of talking. So Slark can apply your uh, your kind of phase boots, right? He puts his phase boots on, and what he does is he runs down heroes and then he pounces on them. He phases through the opposing uh, the opposing creeps or other heroes, pounces on the hero he wants to kill, and then beats them down with the rest of his team. He's a good unit for phase boots, and it also can be used as an escape. Now, the other option there is to do something like power treads. Power treads are really interesting because you get you get some you get to change your attribute, you get additional attack speed. But the key thing is, is you can do something called tread switching, where if you want strength because you want additional health, you can switch it. If you need additional mana regen, you can switch to intelligence. If you want additional attack speed, you switch to agility. You can actually switch it on the fly. And high-end players might switch to, uh, you know, strength to try and make themselves bulkier so they don't, uh, don't get killed if they're getting ganked. So, power treads, really interesting as well. Uh, very high skill cap. Now, the one I really want to talk about is a, from a new player perspective is the Arcane Boots. Now, in my opinion, the Arcane Boots is the biggest bait in Dota 2. A lot of new players, they, they pick, you know, support heroes, they pick, you know, uh, Skywrath Mage, they pick, uh, you, know, um, you know, other heroes, Crystal Maiden, uh, you know, Witch Doctors. They pick all those supports we talked about in the last video, and they immediately buy Arcane Boots. It's their first item. They buy a couple regen items, which is important, as we discussed, but they go with the Arcane Boots, and I feel like that's incorrect, and I'll tell you why. And I know you want the mana, but let's talk about the buildup here. And that's very important with items. All items is the buildup, okay? What do you get in the process of completing the upgraded item is incredibly important because in Dota 2, you never want to feel weak. So let's talk about the Arcane Boots for a second. You have Arcane Boots, 45 movement speed, 250 mana. What, you, uh, what they consist of, they consist of the Boots of Speed and the Void Stone, okay? You have a Void Stone here. So the Void Stone is going to give you 250 mana. 
the problem is the void stone is 900 gold. So 900 gold as a position four or five support is very hard to come by. You're not getting a lot of farm. Not at all. That might be your, your item at 12 minutes. That's not good. So what I would recommend you do is skip the arcane boots if you're relatively new and go to the tranquil boots. And you may think, Alex, that's crazy. I got no mana regeneration. Hear me out. First of all, tranquil boots cost way less. Arcane boots, 1400 in total. Tranquil boots, 925. As a position four and five support, that's a big difference. A big difference. You're getting additional movement speed. You're now even faster. A lot of supports like Lion and Crystal Maiden really, really have a hard time moving quickly. You get the HP regeneration, which is fantastic because you can stay in lane longer, right? You don't need to carry, uh, you know, tangos anymore. You don't need to spend that gold. This is free gold here, right? The other thing is with the 500 gold you've saved, you can buy a ring of Bacillus. Perfect, right? Yes, it's not quite as effective as the uh, the uh, Arcane Boots, but it's pretty damn close because it's, it's mana regeneration to all allies and yourself. And guess what? Look at the buildup. Let's talk about the buildup again. Where are the boots? Why am I so confused? There's the boots. Arcane Boots, 1,400 gold. I buy boots. And then 900 gold later, I buy Energy Booster. That whole 900 gold time, I'm not strong enough. I'm not good. I'm weaker. When I go with the Tranquils, what happens is I got, look at, look at the build of Tranquils. I got the boots, and then I got the wind lace. The wind lace is, I know that I'm kind of blocking it here, but the wind lace is going to give you 20 additional movement speed. And I also got the ring of regen, which gives me uh, mana regeneration. <laughs> 1.5 mana regeneration. The buildup's way better. I get my boots of speed, and then I get a little even faster, and then I get my health regen, and then I get my your Tranquil boots. And then you build the ring. You can even build it a little earlier. You, you, know, you get your Sage's Mask, you get some additional regen, and then you have your recipe. That's only 250, okay? It's only 250. I'm blocking the screen. <laughs> but anyways, that's my rant on boots. And uh, I want to make sure that as new players, you understand that boots can be one of the trickiest decisions to make. If you're new and you're supporting, Tranquil Boots 100%. If you're new and you're, uh, you know, kind of carrying... I recommend getting power treads and you know what switching to you know if you're a juggernaut and agility sorry uh, Yeah, agility sorry is your main uh, attribute then make sure that you select the agility boots if you are um, you know uh, uh, a, a Wraith King then use strength one thing I will say is that the uh, the power treads show that you need like a belt of strength to complete the uh, the kit but realistically, you can use any one of these you can use the uh, robe of the magi and it'll automatically combine into a uh, an intelligent boot, or you can use a band of uh, elven skin. It'll automatically combine into the agility variant. That's important to understand because remember, the buildup's important. So if you want to start by building, uh, you know, by buying a band instead of like, don't, don't, if you're a slark, don't buy a belt of strength. <laughs> you know what I mean? You buy a band. Uh, then it'll automatically convert into an agility power tread. Okay. Great. Now, let's talk about position, specifically position one and two items, okay? Um, now we talked about uh, regeneration. So again, just to quickly recap this: in the early game, you're going to be buying tangos, you're going to be buying clarities, you're going to be buying maybe a ward or two, um, and possibly a salve. Now let's talk about position one and two. So you're either in uh, the safe lane or the mid lane. Okay, let's talk about those. First of all, last hitting. If you want to be focusing on last hits, one of the best items that you can get is the Quelling Blade. The reason for this is, yes, destroying trees has value in, in the support side of things, but you can use Tangos to destroy trees and kind of create lanes where you can pull creeps and stuff like that. And we'll cover that in another video. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is talk about the idea of the Quelling Blade. It increases the attack damage you do to non-hero units, aka creeps, by 15 for melee heroes and 6 for ranged. So again, if you are a Wraith King and you're at the beginning of the game, that extra 15... Um, damage will allow you to last hit more effectively and deny more effectively but most importantly it allows you to last hit more effectively that's an extra 15 damage okay it's a lot it's a lot and it's very uh, it's efficient for that damage with the with the gold it costs okay uh, so quelling blade is very important the other thing I'm going to talk about is the battle fury uh, where is it here there it is battle fury Battle Fury, what it does is it gives you additional damage and it gives you uh, HP regen and mana regeneration. It can also destroy a tree because it's, hey, look at that. It's built from a Quelling Blade. And Battle Fury is key for many heroes like, you know, Juggernaut, Anti-Mage. Uh, many carries take advantage of a Battle Fury. And the reason for that is because it really amplifies your ability to farm. And by farm, I mean kill creeps and neutrals to get more gold and experience. 
So you get an additional, uh, you know, bonus to the the quell damage. So you go from uh, from 16, uh, sorry, 15 to 18. So three extra damage. Nothing crazy, but hey, it helps. But you get to cleave your attack. 70% of your attack damage is cleaved as physical damage in a cone around you. Okay, and it deals 50% to creeps. So the idea about that is that what you're able to do is you're able to kind of kill multiple, like an entire wave of creeps by kind of like very quickly because you're hitting them very quickly um, and you're cleaving bonus damage to all the other ones. So it's not just you're hitting one and doing damage just to one, you're hitting one and doing damage to all of them. When you go to neutral camps, they're stacked very closely and when you hit one, you hit all of them. So you're able to farm very, very, very rapidly. It amplifies your ability to get stronger and get better items. So Battle Fury, a great item for, uh, for melee uh, heroes that really want to kind of push their, uh, their farming ability. Now, the next item that you see in almost uh, many games is the Chrysalis. Chrysalis gives you base damage, so it's great on unit, on heroes that tend to attack very quickly, you know, like uh, you know, like Slarks or PAs and stuff along those lines. But you also get in the opportunity to do additional crit damage. 30% chance to do 160% damage, so it's a crit. And the nice thing about the Chrysalis is it upgrades into, and again, take a note of the buildup. So you get additional damage from the Broadsword and the Blades of Attack, and then you got to wait for 500 gold for the recipe. And then you get the Daedalus. The Daedalus takes the Chrysalis and the Demon's Edge. Now, this is where things get tricky. So when you talk about the Demon's Edge, you're talking about 42 additional damage with 2,200 gold. So if you're trying to build a Daedalus, once you build your Chrysalis, you kind of got to take advantage of the fact you have a Chrysalis. Because if you kind of drag out the game and you die and you feed and all those things, you're not going to have enough money to build your de Demon's Edge. And you're going to be weak that whole time. That's your next power spike. And then when you get the Chrysalis, of course. The, sorry, the Daedalus, you get 88 damage versus Chrysalis is 32. You have a 30% chance of doing 255% damage as opposed to 160. And again, you're gaining slot efficiency. Daedalus takes up one slot. Chrysalis takes up one slot. So very important to understand. Uh, the other one is this, the, the Basher. So you got Basher. Basher is used on heroes that uh, essentially allow them to, uh, to stun the, uh, the opposing team. This is incredibly, incredibly valuable. One, it acts as like a bit of like a, like a control, uh, control item. Now it has a 2.3 second, um, cooldown, which means that even if you're a Slark and you're attacking like a million times a second, you can only bash one every 2.3 seconds, once every 2.3 seconds. Okay. However, the nice thing about Basher is that it can interrupt channeled abilities. So if you have a Crystal Maiden and she jumps in front of you and she freezing fields and for some reason she doesn't have uh, invisibility or anything like that, you can hit her and then bash her and it interrupts the freezing field. So Basher can be great. It's also a good source of crowd control because stunning the target list, stuns are the strongest disables in the game. Because you can't cast spells, you can't move, you can't attack, you can't do anything. So stunning is extremely valuable. 1.5 seconds feels like an eternity when you're getting ganked. So Basher is a fantastic item. It does move into an, uh, an Abyssal Blade as well, which is a great item. Very expensive. Again, uh, you get like a, a bit of a blink and stun effect, which is really neat. You can, it's, a, it's a great ganking item. You don't see it built too often unless the game kind of gets out of hand. Simply because of its outright like outrageous cost. But uh, you can go from Basher to, uh, to the uh, the Blade here. But realistically, most people tend to build a Basher and stay there. They just want that auto-attacking Bash effect, which is A-OK. -okay, but you do have that uh, that upgrade path if you so wish. Now, the next item I wish to speak about here is the Monkey King Bar. Monkey King Bar is right here. Now, the Monkey King Bar has an excellent build-up, okay? Uh, you, got, uh, you, you have the Javelin, you have the Blitz Knuckles, which is new in the latest patch. And you get, then you got a bit of a stretch for the Demon's Edge. And of course, you have the recipe. Now, recipes are interesting. Remember, recipes, whenever you see a recipe, you have to understand, first of all, you buy that last. And you have to understand that the recipe is to slow down your ability to kind of gain access to the item, okay? If you, if it's, uh, it kind of slows down the build. It weakens the buildup of the item because that's dead gold that you have to kind of use in order to get the effect of the item itself. But of course, when you spend that, you get some extra benefit. But the Monkey King bar is used because it pierces evasion so 75 percent chance to pierce evasion so if you're against like a like a phantom assassin go back to heroes for a second let's go to pa for a second yeah. so where's phantom assassin all right everyone's talking at once phantom assassin okay has blur which allows her to basically be uh you know very elusive now the idea here is that you're getting uh, elusiveness so be, at, at level three i can't move my mouse here to show you but uh, you get you know at level four so you're getting 50 percent evasion for 25 seconds that's pretty significant. So she can be very hard to hit. You're basically missing 50% of your attacks on her. Now the thing is, is you counter that 
it was something like uh, BK, uh, sorry, MKB, so Monkey King Bar, because you have a 75% chance of piercing that evasion and doing bonus damage without a cooldown. So some units that are, have a lot of evasion built in, they uh, some heroes, sorry, uh, you can counter them using Monkey King Bar, so a very important thing to understand. And the next thing, which is very similar, well, sounds similar to Monkey, uh, Monkey King, sorry, <laughs> I'm confusing them right now. Monkey King Bar and the Black King Bar. Black King Bar is one of the absolute staples of carry heroes, and almost, actually any hero I should say that. Even supports use it if they want to do channeled abilities without interruption. The, uh, yes, you get stats, you get some strength, you get some damage, that's cool, Black King Bar. But the real star of the show is the magic immunity. Now, what this does is it allows you to save your Crystal Maiden, you get you build a Black King Bar, it'll let you cast Freezing Field and not get interrupted because they cannot hit you with like a stun. Now, Ogre Magi can't stun you. Sven can't stun you. Uh, they have to just eat the damage. Now, the thing about the Black King Bar is that as you use it, every time you use it, it actually decreases in uh, duration. So, you only want to use it when you really need to. You don't just run around popping Black King Bar for no reason. But in major team fights, it'll work wonders for you to protect yourself from magic-based damage and uh, to allow you to kind of, uh, if you're doing channeled abilities, to channel pretty much unimpeded. So, Black King Bar, incredibly valuable. A couple more I want to talk about for position one and two. So position one and two, you're also going to talk about uh, you know going Desolator. Desolator is a fantastic uh, damage uh, dealing uh, you know um, item for you know things like uh, Templar Assassins, uh, Phantom Assassins. Anytime you want to kind of amplify the amount of burst damage you can do, Desolator is a great call for that. Uh, there's also uh, the uh, the Fusal Blade. The Fusal Blade is a great item as well for heroes that want to first of all restrict enemy movement. Helps with ganking because you can inhibit movement, slowing them down. And it also helps to uh, do additional damage by mur uh, by burning uh, mana off the uh, the target, which is key um, against certain lineups. Like if you look at very like if you if you're against very mana dependent lineups, and you can counter that with the fusal blade, do it right. Uh, it's basically like the anti mage's effect, except you know you get to build that into an item. Finally, what I want to talk about here is I want to talk about the shadow blade, which is a fantastic item for for ganking and moving around uh, invisible. It also gives damage and attack speed, which is great for ganking. Uh, it has a bit of a fade time, and it builds into the Silver's Edge, which is very expensive, but it will apply Break, which is a great effect. As you can see, right, you build into Silver's Edge. Yes, it's double the amount of uh, money, but you get increased damage, increased attack rate, you get Strength, Intelligence, and Mana Regeneration, and you get improved uh, Shadow Walk. So, pretty interesting stuff. And, of course, you get the Echo Strike from the Echo Saber, so you get to attack twice very quickly. Very interesting stuff. Finally... The Maelstrom. Maelstrom is a fantastic farming item as it'll apply uh, a, a, a chance to proc. So let's say you have a very fast attack rate, like you're a Juggernaut, you're attacking like crazy. You apply Maelstrom, uh, and what it'll do is it'll make Lightning Arc across uh, the, the opposing team and a Creeps with a 25% chance to proc with no cooldown. And the nice thing about that is like even if you're ranged, so if you're a sniper, you use Maelstrom and you attack from range, and when you proc the Maelstrom, it basically electrifies everyone in the region where you've attacked. So not where you're standing, but where your uh, damage is hit. So if you're attacking from a far range and you proc Maelstrom, they're going to get electrocuted in that range, like, you know, f you know, yards and units away from where you are. So really cool effect. One thing I want to talk about is very specifically to position two, the mid. There's an item that you really need to understand, and that is the bottle. The bottle as a position two mid is, is important to you because not only does it give you added regeneration, right? Because what you can do is you can re uh, refresh your bottle uh, by going to the, uh, the fountain or having someone take the bottle to the fountain for you. But the important thing is that you can basically capture... Remember in the first video how I talked about it, there were, there were uh, runes, power runes, haste, double damage, uh, you know, and others. You can bottle those. You don't have to use them right the moment you pick them up. You can bottle them and hold on to that double damage room. And what you do is uh, you have a few minutes to basically, okay, guys, I got the double damage. Let's try and get a gank. You, you set up a gank, which is basically killing an, an opposing hero, kind of making your team jump on someone to get that kill. And then once you get into that team fight or that fight, then you use your bottle. You use your double damage, and suddenly you are way stronger than you were before. So the enemy team might have misjudged their, their combat chances because they didn't understand that you had a bottled double damage. You use it. And suddenly you're doing way more damage and you take that fight or you lose the fight and you use your bottle uh, and because you, you've haste, you've bottled haste and you get away or you bottled regen and you get ready for the next encounter. So 
bottling's really good for mid because you're the you're the hero with the access to those power runes, whereas the other lanes don't have as easy access. So bottle's very important for mid. Now we're going to talk about position three items. Position three is really interesting because position three is like again as a recap. It's like the axes, the bristlebacks. It's all about being very tanky. And part of that is going to be about getting items like the Blade Mail. Now, where is it here? Why can't I see? There it is. There's Blade Mail. So, Blade Mail is a really interesting item. Blade Mail will allow you to... Yes, it does additional damage. It gives you additional armor, which is great. But it's active. It's active is key. So, for 4.5 seconds, you return 80% of damage done to you from all sources. That's pretty damn good. And you have a passive, which, recur uh, which returns... 20 damage plus 20% dealt to you at all times. A fantastic item. If you're Bristleback, if you're Axe, if you're Legion Commander, anybody that taunts. Like, the nice thing about Axe is when you jump in, you do Berserker's Call. So let's talk about this for a second. So you have Blade Mail, right? You have your active, which will return 80% damage. Let's talk about Axe for a second. So we got our PA. Axe will be, let's get rid of this. So Axe will be right here. Axe's Berserker's Call is going to force enemy units to fight him. Okay, for a certain duration. Two to three seconds. During that two and three second time, if you have chain mail, blade, blade mail, sorry, you're going to be returning the damage that they're doing to you back to them. So they're basically hurting themselves the entire time. Bristleback's similar, right? Uh, Legion Commander does that because which, uh, what Legion Commander does Axel. is she duels. Where's Legion? My blade. Hey, come on, I'll spell Legion correct. Let's spell Legion at least. So Legion's duel here. Uh, where's the, There it is. You. Duel. Uh, what it does is it forces an enemy to attack her and her attack them. But if she activates the blade mail, they're taking additional damage the entire time, and she's not, right? She has, in fact, she has additional armor from the blade mail itself. So some items synergize incredibly well with uh, with certain heroes, and blade mail is one for position three. Uh, I mean, Legion Command Commander is not necessarily position three, but you know, Axe and Bristleback are. Another one I want to talk about is the Vanguard. Now, the Vanguard is, is more or less used as a stepping stone to stronger items. But Vanguard gives you additional health, additional reg regeneration, which is awesome. But it also gives you a passive ability to block incoming damage. So you don't have to activate anything. It's just always doing it. And the nice thing about the Vanguard is it's relatively inexpensive. And it built into a fantastic item for uh, position 3 heroes, which is the Crimson Guard, which gives increased health, increased regeneration, Gives armor, and it can also give, for 12 seconds, allied heroes a chance to block incoming damage. Fantastic! Fantastic item, and it increases your, your uh, passive damage block chance as well. So if you want to be tanky, what you do is you go, you know, you build your uh, Vanguard, and you build that into a Crimson Guard. And having those steps is very important as you kind of consider what kind of items uh, you can build. Now... Moving on to position 3, the ultimate position 3 item is the Heart of Tarask. The Heart of Tarask has a very good buildup in the Ring of Tarask, the Vitality Booster, and the Reaver. The Reaver being the hardest, and of course, $650 recipe. Now, the recipe being $650 is not that much of a big deal, because if you're position 3, you are getting some farm. It's the Reaver. That's kind of hard at three, uh, 3 grand. It's expensive. But look what you get. By putting in 25 strength, you get 40 out. You get, uh, you know, you put in... 250 health, you get 400 out, you're getting 1% of your max health regen, and plus the passive of regeneration, uh, it's uh, amplification. A truly remarkable item for position 3 heroes, uh, you know, axes, bristles, anybody that just doesn't want to die, Heart of Tarask, a fantastic item. So, you're going to see Heart of Tarasks in a lot of games. Um, moving on to the position 3, I'm going to talk about one, uh, no, I want to talk about two more. I'm going to talk about Shiva's Guard as well. Shiva's Guard is expensive. It's uh, less expensive than the Heart of Tarrasque, but still expensive at 4,800. Gives you additional intelligence, which for some strength heroes is a bit of a strange buildup because you need to build a Mystic Staff, so bear that in mind. Gives you the armor, which is good, and the chain mail. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, not the chain mail, the plate mail. But the key thing is it's active. The Arcane Blast, you use it to slow enemy movement all around you, so you know your, your axe. You blink in, you Shiva's guard, you're messing up everyone around you, you Berserker's call, you activate your blade mail. There's a lot going on, but using these items very effectively can be the difference between, like, you know, a high rank player and a relatively low rank player. But for you guys, you're just starting out. So the idea is I just want to show you what Shiva's does, because Shiva's does provide you a lot of interesting uh, opportunities. And of course, the freezing aura really helps because it slows down all the regeneration, life stealing effects, and uh, the attack speed of opponents. 
the last item we're going to talk about here. I should, I, you know what? I'm going to add one more. Assault Curious is great too. Uh, you know, uh, you see sometimes you Assault Curious on guys like, uh, you know, Wraith King and other things like that. Anytime they want to just kind of amplify the attack speed and the attack of all other uh, units as well. I mean, I shouldn't say Wraith King. Wraith King, some, I've seen people build Assault Curious on Wraith King, but um, the, at the long, uh, long story short, it really increases your attack rate, it increases your armor, and it provides your allies with benefits as well. Uh, great item as well. And finally, what I'll uh, recommend here is uh, for position three is, oh, the Heaven's Halberd, that's right. Heaven's Halberd is a great item because it does everything that you want to do as a position three. It gives you evasion, which is added survivability. It gives you strength, which is added hit points and, uh, manner, uh, and health regeneration. It gives you status resistance. So if sun, someone at 20% status, status resistance, someone stuns you for one second, you only get stunned for, for 0.8 seconds. It also amplifies your uh, health regen and your uh, lifesteal amplification. But the big thing is disarm. Every 18 seconds, you can actually uh, disarm melee and ranged targets so they cannot physically attack you. So if you're against, like, you know, a, an anti-mage who's causing a ton of problems, you can disarm him so he's just standing there and he can't do anything. Medusa's. Disarm. Any, like, auto-attack centric hero can be completely countered for three or five seconds by Heaven's Halberd. So again, when you're in position three, you're getting farm, but you're also all about utility. Okay, all about utility. Let's talk about position four. With regards to position four, one of the items I want to really highlight is the mechanism. So again, what this item does, so position four and five, if you're supporting, what your idea here is you want to be able to provide your team with the best chance to win. You want to give your carries position one, two, and even your three off lane, you want to give them the best chance to win. And mechanism is one of those, uh, those items that allows you to do that. It heals them at a wide radiance, 275 health is not insignificant, but it also provides an aura of additional health regeneration, additional armor, okay? Very good. It's a very good item, and the nice thing about Mechanism, if you go Arcane Boots, which I know I said I don't recommend, but if you go Arcane Boots, you can uh, go from Arcane Boots to Mechanism into Guardian Greaves. You would only do that as a position 4. Position 5, you never get enough money to do this. Position 4, though, you might pull enough money, like if you're a Skywrath or, um, you know, a Treant or something like that. Uh, I mean, Treant has other items you can build, too, but regardless, if you're position 4 and you're building... Uh, you're building support items and you got enough farm, you can pull off Guardian Griefs. Really interesting. Other items to talk about uh, position four. So let's say you don't need healing. Mechanism provides healing. Let's say you're against a team that has a ton of, you know, burst magic damage. You're looking at a Pipe of Insight. Pipe of Insight is going to provide you with magic resistance, you with health regeneration, but it will also allow you to provide a magic barrier of 400 damage to all nearby allies and also gives everyone around you in an aura 10% additional magic resistance. That is very key. So that can single-handedly counter very spell-heavy lineups, okay? So if you're against Pugnas and Lina's and, you know, even a lion sometimes with, uh, if, you know, uh, if his, uh, his ultimate's getting out of control, right? Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, what you want to do is you're building Pipe of Insight against mage-heavy lineups. Again, position 4 item. Meh, position 5 too. It's much cheaper. But uh, but you can, you can position 5 a pipe for sure. Uh, but anyways... That's what the Pipe of Insight does against Mage Heavy lineups. Now, what I would also recommend for uh, position 4 is the uh, Spirit Vessel. Well, I should say you start with the Urn of Shadows. It's very important that you communicate with your team who's building the urn if you decide to build an urn. Because if you have multiple urns on your team, like it's just, it's a, you're, you lost. Because you can only, you gain charges by allowing heroes to die within range. Okay? When you get a, when your team gets a kill and a hero dies within range, you get a charge. However, if uh, like if you're in a situation where multiple multiple teammates have the urn, then you guys are basically just stealing each other's charges, and you can't use good effect of the uh, the urn of shadows. Now, so gains charge every time an enemy hero dies within uh, within the uh, 1400 units. It gives mana regeneration, health, and armor. But the important thing is, is it provides health regeneration when cast on allies, but deals additional damage when cast on enemies. It's a very versatile item, and again, it has a great build up. Right, you have Sage's Mask, Circle it and the Ring of Protection, and a relatively inexpensive recipe. Great for position 4 and 5. Now what you do is you can take that into the Spirit Vessel. You have your urn, you add your Vitality Booster, and a relatively expensive recipe of 1,000 gold. But what you get is 250 health, increased regeneration, and uh, attributes and armor. But the big thing is now it does percentage-based damage and percentage-based healing. That's key. The reason for this is because... Um, what you can do is you can uh, you can actually no sorry it doesn't do percentage based healing just percentage based damage it does 40 health regeneration per second when cast on allies, but on enemies say you have a super tanky enemy like an axe or a bristleback, their health 
If you're hitting them percentage base per second, you're just blowing through their health very quickly. And that is where Spirit Vessel can be very valuable. As a support, you're doing an incredible amount of damage to a hero that has been built to tank an incredible amount of damage. So the percentage base damage per second is absolutely outstanding. Outstanding. So um, it's, a, it's a great item. It also does uh, increase damage per second. It's a great item, Spirit Vessel, for position four and five. Uh, it's more of a position, uh, you know, I, no, I shouldn't say more of a position four. You can do it as a five as well. But uh, an absolutely fantastic item, one that I really want you to kind of pay attention to. Another great item is the Yule's Scepter of, uh, of uh, Divinity. It gives uh, intelligence, which is great for position four and five. It gives mana regeneration, great for four and five, and increased movement speed. Guess what? Great for position four and five. Uh, so the nice thing about that is that uh, the Cyclone can be used uh, to save yourself from damage. It can be used to slow down a retreating, uh, to kind of well, obstruct a retreating enemy. It can be used to give you a chance to run away. So when an enemy jumps you, you, uh, you kind of uh, Cyclone them in the air and you run away. Uh, it's also a basic to spell, so it'll take any effects off you. It takes uh, effects off them if they're blood lusted and stuff like that. And they take additional damage when falling. The nice thing about the Yule Scepter of Divinity is it actually stacks with certain well, heroes. We're talking about heroes here, so let's actually show, I'm going to show Morana. Here we go. So here's Morana. I'm actually going to show you this in a second. So Morana is, uh, it, like, there's some items, remember I talked about earlier how there's some items that just synergize incredibly we well with certain heroes? Well, the Yule Scepter is kind of one of those. So I'm going to come we over ride. here, I'm going to level up, uh, I'm going to level, oh, I don't need to level up once or twice. So level up here, let's uh, select I an enemy here. So we got a we got an enemy axe here. Here he is. He's stuck in the trees. Of course he's stuck in the trees. So let's say I, I buy myself a, a Yule Scepter here. Got myself a Yule Scepter, okay? So basically what I do here, so usually Yule Scepter, you throw them up in the air. They go up, and they come down. They take a little bit of damage on their way down. Cool. But on a hero like Marana, it gives you the opportunity to stack with one of your abilities. In this case, Sacred Arrow. So what I'm going to do is, I Yule Scepter, and you kind of get used to this. You Yule Scepter, and then you throw the arrow, and as soon as he lands, he takes the damage. Now in that case, it could have even been tighter, right? So throw it, throw the arrow, he lands, and he takes the... Oh, I missed him! I missed him! So I'll show you that again. Good demonstration, Alex. What a noob. Uh, so he falls down, and you time it so that he lands. And again, this is one of those things you can practice, right? Where, like, you get into a lobby here, you practice, and you, you kind of get the timing down with the yes. sound. Like, there was perfect, right? So basically, he lands. As soon as he lands, he gets stunned again, so he's locked down. Not only is he locked down for the time of the uh, the scepter, but he's locked down for the time of the, uh, the arrow as well. So he hasn't been able to do anything for, like, four seconds. Mm. A pretty uh, interesting mechanic, right? So anyways... Let's go back here. That miss was embarrassing. I'm so ashamed. Yeah, right. But anyways, let's talk about a few other items here. So the other ones I want to talk about for position four is I think that the Solar Crest is a really neat item as well. You can really amplify the armor of your uh, your your teammates. Uh, just bear in mind though, it's kind of has a reverse effect where it takes armor away from you to give it to them. But overall, a very good item that you can use to kind of really amplify the survivability of some of your teammates. While also, if you cast on an enemy, reducing their armor. So if you're focus firing certain enemies. Uh, you can basically uh, you can basically take take armor away from them and take them down all at once and increase your DPS potential. Now a very expensive position four item is the Scythe of the Vise. Scythe of the Vise is pretty cool because what you can do is you can actually hex. This item's good. It's super expensive. Position four hundred percent if you're carrying. But what you can do is uh, you you can activate your hex in order to take down um, you know their opposing uh, their opposing uh, carries. Uh, prevent people from running away. This can also be on some uh, some heroes in position two. They're mid. They are intelligence-based heroes. Uh, you know, and uh, suddenly you, you build a scythe of the vise. Uh, very expensive. Not really. I you know I almost take back seeing that's a position four item. Yeah, I've seen it on position four heroes, but that is a very late game, crazy item. One last thing I'll mention for position four. Uh, and five, as we move into those items as well, is the Aether Lens. Now, as a new player, if you're running someone like Crystal Maiden, Lion, or others, you might have a hard time with, like, the amount of range you have on your casting abilities. You want to be positioned safely, and I totally understand that. And Aether Lens will allow that. It is a very, very hard buildup. You're talking about a Energy Booster, a Void Stone, and then a quite expensive recipe. So the buildup really makes you weak until... Until you actually pull it off, but your item and cast range is, is increased very significantly. You get the mana, you get the mana regen, but this is mostly about disting yourself 
distancing yourself from the uh, the opposition while you cast. I build Aether Lens on um, on Maiden every once in a while when, like for instance, um, you know I'm getting good farm. We're we're in the lead, and I'm building more more towards like a skirmishing uh, role. Like I'm you know I'm doing a lot of uh, you know uh, Novas, and I'm doing a lot of Frostbites from distance and locking enemies down. So it can be very beneficial. Great on Skywrath Mage as well, of course. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about uh, position five specific items. There's a few. Uh, four staff. Okay, four staff. Where's the four staff? Why can't I see it? Where it is? Four staff. So four staff's great. Okay, relatively inexpensive item. Okay, no, twenty one hundred is expensive, but position five, it's doable. Right? Four staff's good. Gives you the intelligence and HP regen you need. But the key thing is it can push a target six hundred units in the direction it's facing. It's fantastic. It's an escape for you. It's an escape for your allies. It can be an initiation for you. It can be an init initiation for your allies. It can be it can be something where you can use to gank. Like if you're opposing team, like, you know what? I'll show you. Let's get into let's get into something. Here. Let's go to Crystal Maiden now. We ride in Legion Commander. Union. It's funny because when I when I was originally playing this video, I, I didn't I actually intend nice. on doing this. But here now that we're here, let's do it. I'll show you how four staff works. So the nice thing about four staff as well. So let's go. Feel the chill. We got four staff here. Let's uh, let's actually let's buy it here. Where's my four staff? Go to upgrades. There's my four staff. We got four staff here. So what? First thing I want you to know is that when you activate it, it basically just pushes you. So you activate your double tap here, and it pushes you. So let's say I have an enemy here. We got we got axe again. We got angry axe. Angry axe here. Let's say axe is chasing me down here. What I can do is like, oh, I don't want to fight axe. Oh, I gotta refresh my thing. So I don't want to fight axe. I gotta get away. I gotta get towards my tower. That gives me a little burst of, uh, of speed there that I can uh, use to get to my tower. Now, the other thing I can do is let's say we're in a position where I got multiple allies here and we want to gank Axe. He's facing me. I can actually select Axe and push him towards us. And then we can frostbite him and we can kill him. Right? Another very interesting uh, opportunity. So, the other thing that you need to know about the Force Staff is that it can go through... Um, it can travel over terrain. So let's say I'm in a situation where, you know, Axe is over here. He's going to kill me. I know he's going to kill I can't see him. It's weird. I'm controlling a hero I can't uh, can't see. Get over there. So Axe is here. And I'm like, oh, no, he's going to kill me. Axe can't just look. He has to run all the way around. But I got a four staff. I push myself over the hill. And now I'm safe. And he has to either run all the way around to get up there. So four staff is a really interesting item. It can be used to save an, uh, an enemy. It can be used to save a... Uh, okay, use <laughs> you can save an enemy. Yes. But... Uh, it can be used to save an ally as well, like if you have an ally, right, and he's, uh, you know, got a targeting dummy here, and a little targeting dummy, he's in trial, actually, no, sorry, little targeting dummy's our ally, Axe is on that targeting buddy, we can put, oh, it doesn't even work on a targeting buddy, I didn't know that, but anyways, I've never tried to force staff a targeting buddy, unfortunately, but, you know, you can use it on an ally to basically save your ally as well, so force staff, a pretty interesting item, one that you want to use whenever you All can. Alright, so let's talk about Glimmer Cape for a second. Glimmer Cape is a fantastic item with a ton of utility. The nice thing about Glimmer Cape here is that it can be used, it can be used in a way to kind of gank, it can be used to escape, it can be used to give your uh, your uh, allies a chance to escape, it can be used to initiate a fight, it can be used to reduce the magic damage coming at you, like if, uh, if Reaper's Scythe is coming from Necrophos and you know it's coming because it has a huge gargantuan animation, cast it on your ally. Reduce the amount of damage you take by 45%. It can be the difference between living and living and dying. But uh, Glimmer Cape has, you know, I'll show you again. So Glimmer Cape has a whole lot of interesting, uh, interesting uses here. And I'll show you. So the nice thing about Glimmer Cape as well is that most sources of invisibility, if you actually cast a, uh, a skill or you use an item or something along those lines, you lose it. That's not the case here. So let's actually just take our alt here. Good job, Maiden. Let's get an enemy hero. Oh, poor, poor Axe. No, no, don't die, Axe. Don't die on me, Axe. Let's level them up a little bit. Let's refresh them. So the nice thing about the uh, the Glimmer Cape here, so you can also use Force Staff. I'll show you. So we got Force Staff. We got Glimmer Cape here. So the nice thing about Force Staff and Glimmer Cape is you can do this. Let's right? Go. So watch this. So if I want to alt the uh, the axe, right? Let's say with my Force Staff, I can do this and then alt. Pretty cool initiation, right? Pretty neat initiation. But with Glimmer Cape, what I can do is I can do this. Go invisible. Axe doesn't even know I'm there. And then do my alt. Okay? Pretty cool as well. Now the other option is to do something like this. Where you can uh, you can actually uh, so again I want to just illustrate that I'm invisible now, and I'm alting. I'm still invisible. I'm still invisible, so it doesn't make a difference. Okay, it does not make a difference. So what you can do is you can use Glimmer Cape, or let's see, you know, Axe is uh, chasing me down. He's trying to kill me. I use Glimmer Cape, and I'm invisible. He has no idea where I am. He can't continue to attack me. Okay. So Glimmer Cape has a whole lot of uses. And again, don't forget it has magic uh, resistance as well, which is really key because magic resistance Agreed. can really help you to survive 
uh, some uh, some incoming damage. But again, you can even if you really want to combo, if you got the farm, you can do something like this, right? You can glimmer, you can uh, frost, do the item in there, and look, you're invisible. You close the gap. They have no idea you're even there. So glimmer and four staff give you a lot of opportunities to do some interesting stuff uh, in the game. So let's actually go back here. Where we, oh, I gotta actually exit the demo here. We're gonna exit the demo here. We're gonna go to learn. We're gonna talk about a couple more items, and we're calling it a day. Uh, what I really want to do, actually, position uh, position five. That's I think I'm good with that right now. We spoke about for position five. We talked about eighth of lines, four staff, and glimmer keep. Veil of discord is pretty good too. You can increase kind of the amount of damage that people take from spells. A pretty good item as well, with a pretty decent build up as well. Because as I talk about the ring of Basilius, go uh, go tranquil boots into ring, and then you can build a veil afterwards. A pretty good item. Now. We're going to close this by talking about some special items, and then we'll talk about the neutrals very quickly. I know this is a long, longer video than I expected. The last thing I want to talk about for you guys are special items that are used across all heroes position 1 through 5. Blink Dagger is a perfect example of that. Blink Dagger can be used on a wide variety of heroes. Crystal Maiden can use it to initiate her, uh, you know, her freezing field, but uh, there are some heroes that rely on it, especially position 4 heroes, to do work. Position 3 heroes like Axe can use it as well, but let's talk about one of the particular uh, use cases, which is in Earthshaker. So, I know I'm showing you guys a lot of different examples here, and I hope it helps, but Earthshaker is a fantastic uh, position 4 hero, and makes excellent use of Blink Dagger. In fact, it's primarily why he's a position 4 hero. You need a Blink Dagger to be successful, so let's level him up. Okay, let's get Echo Slam there, of course Aftershock as well. So basically, what you're looking at here, Echo Slam will do damage more damage depending on how many nearby units there are. So let's get ourselves a Blink Dagger here. We got the Blink Dagger, here it is. It's all we need. So what we're going to do here is we're going to spawn an enemy. Here's my axe. Now let's take a note, so I'm actually going to level up uh, the enemy here. Let's level up to six here. Give him a little more health. Yes. So, usually I would have to run up to axe and then echo slam. And that's how much damage I did, okay? Now, the realistically, if, I, if he sees a, an Earthshaker running up to him, he can just be like, nope, 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 and run away, right? So we don't want that. We use the Blink Dagger, okay? We Blink in, we Echo Slam. He didn't have a chance to run away. Who cares, though? What really becomes important is when you have lots of enemies. There is no team when you, oh, am I, am I able to select my Bristle? Hey, Enemy get out of here, guys. Killing. Not Bristle, that's Earthshaker. So there, there. Look how many enemies we have. Now remember, Echo Slam does additional damage based on all the enemies that are there, okay? So if I, if this, pretend this is an enemy team, I run up on them, they're like, no, 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 we're, we're clustered up, get away from them, right? But what you can do is yes. if they're clustered up in a team fight starting, you blink in, right? You blink in. Oh, don't do that. That's how you waste your ult. You blink in and ult, and look at that. Look how much extra damage I did. Because of the, uh, yes, I killed those bots. I'm on a rampage now. The music just swelled up all, all extreme because I got a, an epic kill. But even to this level 6 axe, look how much extra damage it did. Because remember, Echo Slam does bonus damage based on how many Echo echoes it can do with people that are nearby so that's why if you see the enemy team out of position so again uh you see an enemy team out of position here let's get out of the way there let's take my uh you see them out of position like oh they're super vulnerable here this is my moment to echo slam right it's good to use a blink because you can basically dive right in you dive right in there and you blink them you blink them and you echo slam them right so it's a good example of why of why the uh, Blink Dagger can be so valuable um, in, in, in this game. It's one of the best items in the game. Uh, Magic Stick is also a great item if you're against someone like a Bristleback or even Skywrath Mage to some extent. He does too much damage, but anybody that spams abilities, Undying is another one. If you see Undying, again, you're against an Undying or against a Bristleback with uh, Quill Spray and stuff like that, you take a Magic Stick and they're just adding charges to you. Uh, you know, and, and you're able to use that to gain an, uh, a burst of healing and uh, mana regeneration, but only when the opposing team is using items or using spells against you very frequently. The Tome of Experience is very important that you understand. If you're in position 4 and 5, mainly the 5 because you're not focused on the farm, you're focused on supporting your team, so you might be very far behind on level, so that 700 experience points you get from the Tome of Knowledge is like a difference of a full level to really help keep you relevant. So. Generally speaking, in most games, position uh, the support heroes do take the Tome of Knowledge to help them catch up. In your pub games, you might see some greedy carries taken, and that's uh, that's not cool, but that's what the Tome of Knowledge does. Uh, it's uh, it's in the shop, and it's on cooldown, so it's important you buy it when you get the opportunity, and it's been recently reduced in cost. Now, let's talk about the ultimate of special items, and that is Aghanim's Scepter. Aghanim's Scepter is one of the most unique items in MOBAs because what it does is it gives you not only stats in health, mana, and attributes, but it gives you 
a completely different ability. Now, this is what happens here, okay? I shouldn't say completely different ability. What I should say is it modifies abilities on heroes. And some, some modifications are better than others, but they're all very interesting and unique. It's an expensive item, so, you know, some heroes don't necessarily build diagonals, but others, it's a big part of their kit. So let's uh, let's get see some examples of this, okay? So first of all, we have Tidehunter, right? Tidehunter is mainly used because Stop. of his Ravage, no his ability to stun all nearby units. Now, Agnum Scepter does not improve Ravage. However, it improves Gush. Gush is a single target ability, but when you get the Agnum uh, Scepter upgrade, it becomes an AoE wave that travels in a big line, hitting all enemies down its past, path with a reduced cooldown. A huge upgrade for Tidehunter. Makes him very interesting. Um, other heroes can get, uh, you know, he's, he's an example where you get one upgrade, uh, upgraded ability. Skywrath Mage, it upgrades multiple abilities. It upgrades his Arcane Bolt so that uh, it splits. It upgrades his uh, Concussive Shot. Right? So that it hits a different uh, unit as well. It, it upgrades his Ancient Seal. He's getting a ton of benefits uh, from, uh, from, the, uh, from the Scepter. And he even upgrades his ultimate. His ultimate! So you're talking about, like, if you're, if you're positioned for Skywrath Mage, suddenly that Agnum Scepter looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? Right? Uh, and there's other examples too, like Crystal Maiden. Where is she? Where is she? Where is my Maiden? There's, there's Crystal Maiden. So it doesn't provide any benefit on any of her other skills, but what it does is it uh, it increases her effectiveness of freezing field. It applies frostbite to anybody standing in the freezing field for a set amount of time. So basically, you're in freezing field, you have an Agnum Scepter, and it's applying the frostbite skill to those in the freezing field, which then pins them in place to take more damage from freezing field. In my experience, I don't usually build Agnums on Crystal Maiden because it's a little too expensive for position 5, but still very interesting. So again, the important thing to understand here is that Agnum Scepter makes a lot of uh, heroes very uh, unique. It provides them with a lot of interesting utility, and each hero will gain value from Agnum Scepter. Some are bigger than others, but still it's important to uh, understand that Agnum Scepter will modify one or more skills, sometimes the ultimate, to give you more impact in the game. Now, neutral items, this video is way longer than I expected, but neutral items, the way neutral items work is basically on your heroes, there's an additional item slot that can be used for um, neutral items. It's just above your TP scroll on the right of your uh, of your inventory. Now, the way this works is you have, so after seven minutes, you have to kill neutral creeps in order for the opportunity for these items to randomly drop. And... After 17 minutes, you know, you have a, a second tier of items at, thir at uh, tier, sorry, 27 minutes, you have tier 3, and so on. I very rarely see the tier 5 items, so we're not going to talk uh, at all about those here. But tier 4, 37 minutes is usually when you're starting to close out the game. Now, these items have very different effects. The uh, Keen Optic, great for casters, right? Uh, great for, uh, for uh, you know, people like uh, Sl uh, Slark and... Uh, other, uh, you know, agility-based melee heroes, Juggernaut, fantastic, helps him uh, farm a little better because he can get closer to the creeps, not worry about incoming damage. You have uh, attack rate. These are all very different, you know, 6-2 attributes. As you can see, considering this is a free drop at 7 minutes, 6 attributes is a pretty damn good, uh, good thing. And again, Royal Jelly, it's a consumable. You apply it to heroes so they can get additional uh, health and uh, mana regeneration. Um, you know, you can get some, uh, some trusty shovel, which just got uh, buffed. You can pull bounty runes from the ground. There's a ton of different items. Some focus on supports like the Philosopher's Stone. I take this as Crystal Maiden. Uh, I get 70 additional gold per minute. I get additional mana. And I get reduced attack damage. But I don't really care because I don't auto attack very much as Crystal Maiden anyway. She's a utility spellcaster. I don't attack very much. In the early game I do. But by the time it's 17 minutes, I'm not auto attacking. This might help you get your, uh, you know, your, your Blink Dagger or your... Uh, your force staff for someone at 70 minutes you should have a force staff already but you get the idea right then you have you know damage based items like you know crit for uh, you know this is good for someone like a slark you have the uh, the grove bow which is fantastic for someone like you know uh, any ranged here uh, heroes like uh, templar assassin uh, sniper etc right and then finally you know you get into these here you know uh, the orb of destruction really good for kind of sl uh, slowing and finishing uh, heroes off uh, fantastic items like uh, Timeless Relic, uh, Relic is fantastic for spellcasters. Crystal Maiden increased uh, spell damage, increased debuff duration. Now the thing about neutral items here, the video is too long. So the key thing you need to understand is that you can uh, you can pick up a neutral item. If there's neutral items in the shop, so I, will sh I should show you this. So what I'm going to do, one more last example here with uh, neutral items. Let's see Crystal Maiden here. Let's demo Crystal Maiden out. So neutral items can be uh, picked up uh, and delivered to you by your courier. They can be sent to the uh, the shop. So basically the way it works oh, is you uh, you open up your shop here. You have neutrals, right? Oh, we haven't discovered any here. But let's say you have them here, right? You can right click on them and... Oh, it actually it did add it for me. Great. 
Uh, so what what will happen is like uh, you can actually have it delivered to you. Uh, the other way you can do it is let's say you find one, right? Let's say you, you want a poor man's shield, you can rotate them right here, and then you can right click and teleport it back to stash, so that uh, anybody from your team can say, oh look. The, uh, the optics back, I want that, and they select it, and the courier delivers it. Uh, but realistically, these items do play a very huge role in the game. It's very important that you uh, you understand how you can use them with good effectiveness. Oh, here's a good example. So let's say I want the keen optic. I right click on it, and under most circumstances, it would get wrote, it would get brought to me by my uh, my courier. But anyways, the uh, the important thing to understand here is that. Um, you know, neutral items, don't forget to pick them up. A lot of new players run around without neutral items, and it punishes them. Be sure to pick them up, and uh, in uh, very specific hero guides, we will talk about neutral items so that you have a good understanding as to how these items can be used to help you find success. And do it Underlords. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. The next video is going to be about how to carry. We're going to talk about carrying very specifically. Uh, we're going to give some uh, hero examples about item builds and stuff like that to give you a good understanding of how you can start carrying in Dota 2. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers. Take care, everyone, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day.